If you're a thumbnail designer and you've ever been wondering how Mr. Beast gets that kind of cartoony, smooth, but sharp style of effect on his thumbnails, this video is going to show you how to take your headshots from this to this. Just before we get started, I just quickly want to plug my Discord down in the description below. I've now fixed the link so that it doesn't expire after seven days, so I didn't even know that was a thing. So yeah, if you want to join a Discord for creative designers, got free resources and all that kind of stuff in there, and more stuff coming soon, then click that link down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get on with the tutorial. Not all of you guys are gonna have major high quality images, so I'm gonna show you how to combat that really, really easily and for free. So obviously you get this and you're thinking, it's not looking bad, I could probably use it in the thumbnail, but headshots realistically on a thumbnail need to be probably like literally just shoulders and head. So something like that. And as you can see already, the quality on this isn't great. So what we wanna do is actually upscale this. So what I usually do is hit control A, so it selects everything, hit control C and control V. So you're not gonna export anything that's outside of this um, thumbnail size. So then what you wanna do is once you've duplicated this layer, right click it and do quick export as PNG. Then what you want to do is open up your internet browser and you just will literally want to search AI upscaler. But this is the one I tend to use here, upscale media, just because it's free. It doesn't trick you into getting some watermark or anything like that. You just get the, the free the full extent of it. So once you're on this website or whatever website you're choosing, you just want to upload the image that you've just saved. So by default, it will just upscale it by two times with enhanced quality off. I like to turn on enhanced quality just because why not? It makes the quality of the image slightly better. So if we zoom in here, you can, I mean, it's kind of minor, but it does make a huge difference when it comes to giving us a base for what we're going to be using this for. So we're going to download that image and save it in the same place. Then once you've done that, you want to come into Photoshop and click file place embedded or linked. It doesn't really matter which I always just go with embedded and just find wherever that file you've downloaded went to and just click place. So as you can see, guys, this was the before and this is the after. Now it's not dramatically changed, but that's fine. If you zoom right in and you toggle the before and after, you notice that it's just removed a lot of like the little artifacts in here on his nose. Like there's lots of little pixelated lighter textures and that kind of thing and especially with the eyes because the eyes are extremely important as we'll figure out later on so once you're happy with your upscaled image you can delete the other layers as they don't really matter i'm just going to duplicate it once more just so we have a backup if we ever mess anything up we need to start again then what you're going to do is hit w on your keyboard and come up to here and click select subject and this is going to hopefully select Mr. Beast. I thought that was going to crash my Photoshop then, but it didn't. And then what you want to do is hit Q on your keyboard to bring up the quick mask mode. And you, so you can just tell how well it's actually cut him out. Like as we can see here, it's going to be including lots of this stuff at the top, which we don't actually need, isn't part of him. Or like here, it's going to be missing the back of his head. So what you can do is hold left all on your keyboard and right click, drag your mouse up and down to change the softness and hardness and drag it left and right to change the size. I usually go with like a 50, 60 percent ish hardness one when I'm do dealing with hair. And we're gonna make sure we're on white, which you can press X to switch between your foreground and background colors. Black erases and white keeps it in. So anything you paint in black, it's gonna tell it to cut out. Anything you paint in white, it's gonna tell it to keep. So we're going to paint in white for any bits that it's just missed off of our headshot. So once you're happy with the cutout, hit Q again and it'll, you'll see it will just select him like this. And we're going to come down to the bottom here and click the layer mask button. And now as you can see, if you notice on here and you just want to double check that it's masked everything correctly and there's nothing like else left in the, the image, you can do two things. You can hide the layer below it and see if it's done anything or you can hold left alt and click on the layer mask itself and you can see exactly what it's masked and if it's left anything because sometimes you see like here it leaves bits in gray and if you're working with lots of glows and lighting stuff it can sometimes mess it up and you, you're not sure why so it's always just good to double check your mask so we're going to leave him there on the thumbnail as that's where he'd be on a thumbnail most likely and we're just going to start layering up the effects that give it that mr beast style first thing i'm going to do is duplicate that layer just for that same reason of we want to back up if we do mess up or we want to restart then we're going to rasterize this layer so that we can actually edit it and what you're going to do we're just going to go in and do some general retouching and imperfection fixing and all that kind of stuff so the clone stamp tool is going to be your best friend here and the spot healing tool all those kind of things i prefer to use the clone stamp just because you get a little bit more control so if you don't know how to use the clone stamp tool or you've never used it before go onto the layer that you want to fix and then you hold left alt and you'll get this target up here just left click once and that will pick that point and then you can go on another layer or the same layer if it's not masked and if you start to paint somewhere else, as you can see, it's going to create that little cross where you all clicked. And then wherever you paint, it's going to paint from that position, but in the position that your circle is where you're painting. It sounds confusing, but once you once you try this yourself in Photoshop, you'll see what I mean. As you can see, I've just painted in another Mr. Beast eye over here because I selected the point here. So you just want to go around his face and just get rid of any imperfections. Some good things to do 
from personal experience is even if they're not proper bags but just get rid of the kind of creases under his eyes and stuff like that as long as it kind of blends a little bit don't worry about it looking literally perfect or like here where he's got all these kind of dark circles where as you can see already if we do the before and after you can kind of see the difference that makes in his face and we're not even done yet what i like to do as i go through and do my headshots is actually rename the layers of each step that we've taken so we're going to call the first one retouching and we're just going to duplicate the retouching layer and now we're going to call this cc or color correction so what we're going to do now is go into the the one we just named cc click filter and click camera raw filter i mean some of you thumbnail designers are probably already very familiar with this tool so what we want to do in here is give his face some contrast but not too much so that when we layer other effects on top of it it's going to be too much we just want to do a nice kind of base so that it looks a little less washed out than it kind of already does so what you can do is obviously whack up the contrast a little bit but i think with camera raw filter you want to be very subtle so i'm going to do it maybe something like this the values don't matter as it's going to depend on your headshot image as to what you crank these to but just try to do them as little as possible where it gives you a different effect and a way to see this is if you come down to the bottom right here you can click this little square picture and it'll give you a before and after so your edited one will appear here on the right and the before picture obviously on the left here and you can you can toggle between some different modes if you if you prefer it a different layout or something but i prefer it like this so what we're going to do is up the contrast a little bit we're going to up the highlights ever so slightly i always tend to do it around 10 just to begin with and we're going to up the shadows as well because what up in the shadows actually does although yes you're making it light and giving it less contrast you're actually bringing out the detail in the dark parts of its image and then what you can do is tone down the black slightly to give it that that contrast you can see a lot more detail in here in the shadows down here it's a lot more contrast around the edges of his nose under his eyes that kind of thing and his hair and then what we want to do is come down to the color mixer down here and this is where it's going to vary again on your headshot and your your subject but in this picture for my liking mr beast's face looks a little red so what we can do is adjust the hue ever so slightly and i mean i mean very slightly on here i don't tend to go above or below the 30s so as you can see if you crank it all the way he looks yellow and he looks ill so I'm going to I'm going to go about 20 and I am going to drag the oranges to be a little bit more red, but not too much just because you don't want it looking too yellow with yellows. If your image just happens to be very yellow, like in the lighting, maybe they're out in the daylight or something like that. I tend to out of personal preference drag this so it's more orange because you get a kind of golden look as opposed to it being like that weird yellowy green kind of tone. So in fact, I might drag this a little bit to the left. And I'll do it quite a lot with the yellow specifically. You kind of judge it by what your, your subject looks like. And I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to click OK. Then once again, we're going to duplicate this layer. And we're going to call it Smoothen. And this is where we're going to come in and actually smoothen the skin on Mr. Beast's face or your subject's face. Once again, we're going to apply our favorite filter, Camera Raw Filter. However, when you click on the Filter tab, don't click this one at the top as that will just apply the previous settings. You want to come down to where it has the shortcut next to the name and we're gonna click it. Come up to the basic tab, and what you can do, again, you judge it by your subject, but if, you, if it's quite high in texture and you can normally, it's a very high quality photo, you can normally see like the pores and their faces and that kind of thing. What you tend to wanna do with this effect is come to the texture slider and just slide this down quite a little bit, maybe like, 50 ish i'm going to do it a little bit less because our picture is not the highest of quality to begin with clarity you can mess about with and you can kind of judge on your own you can turn it up a little bit but i would stray away from turning it up too much as it kind of just undoes the effect that we've we've just added with the textures sliding down although i am going to add it up a little bit literally just by six and you come down to detail we're going to up the sharpening quite a little bit just because we want our picture to be as sharp as possible but we're also going to do noise reduction as this is going to smooth out the face quite a lot and as you can see now it's already starting to give that Mr. Beast kind of effect with his very smooth skin. Once we've done that, we want to duplicate the layer again. And we're just going to call this one lighten. Now you can do this the next two steps and either way around. However, I always just prefer to do the lighten first. Come down here to the make a new adjustment layer with this button here. And we're going to add a curves layer. We're going to hold left door on our keyboard. Hover over the bottom of the layer in our layers panel. The curves layer that is. And left click and it's now going to create this arrow which means it's clipping mask to this layer so if we were to have a background for example and we we're to paint in the mask over here it's not going to do anything until it touches mr beast's face so what we want to do is you want to lighten up the lights on his face but only around certain areas so what we want to do is at a point i usually do it around here where this kind of grid line is and just drag it to the left ever so slightly and, and i really mean slightly you don't want to drag it too much you don't want to blow out the features that we're going to highlight and you don't want to drag it not enough where it doesn't really change it here is probably perfect so it looks a little blown out like a little too light but that's kind of what we're going for because what we're going to do is fill our layer masking with black so i've just pressed Control backspace because it is on my background color 
whilst I was, had the layer mask selected. I'm gonna get a soft brush, so hold left alt on the keyboard, right click, drag it upwards, and then just go and paint around the main kind of features on his face that you want to be highlighted. So that's gonna be his eyes, kind of around his mouth, maybe just a big kind of general brush over his nose. So I'm gonna go with something like that. Next, what we want to do is not duplicate the whole layer. We just want to duplicate our curves layer. I'm gonna clipping mask that as well, the same way we did the first time. Add a new mask. And then we're just gonna click this reset button here on the new one. You can even rename these. So you can rename these ones lighten and you can rename the new one we're gonna make darken. So once you've reset this layer, we're gonna do a complete opposite. So we're gonna come down to the bottom left of this line, drag it out to the right a little bit so that the darker areas are going to get darker. Hold left alt on the lighten layer, on the mask specifically, and drag it onto the darken layer. Click on the darken layers layer mask and hit control I. You can inverse that. So now as you can see, his face is very much brighter. So if we toggle on before and after of this, you can see the difference that that makes in making you focus on his facial features and making it that kind of smooth color. And then from here, you can kind of literally go in and just adjust it a little bit more to see to see how you like it. And if you if you feel like you need to get rid of any areas, like maybe on his cheeks, you want it to not be so bright. So once you're happy with those effects, what you then want to go and do, highlight all of these layers, Command J to duplicate them and just hit Command E. So now what we're going to do is we want to just give his features more definition. So what I like to do for this is come to brightness and contrast adjustment layer, clipping mask this onto Mr. Beast, up the brightness quite a bit, maybe on like 30, because you can always adjust the slider and up the contrast a little bit as well. Fill this layer mask in with black, get a soft white colored brush on the layer mask and just come in and paint it over the kind of like highlights of his face. Now this is very strong, so let's turn the brightness down on this a little bit. So the main kind of highlight areas would be like his cheeks, especially his eyes. Maybe we'll do a separate one for his eyes actually. It's anywhere that kind of, you can kind of naturally see where the highlights are on his face anyways. Something like that works. And then what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer, fill in the mask with black, because I always like to do his eyes on a separate layer because I think I always make, like to make his eyes a bit brighter. And with the same thing, although a slightly harder brush, we're gonna come in and just paint over his eyes and brighten them up. Because fun fact, the eyes are the first thing you noticed about someone's face. So that's why a lot of YouTubers do these kind of OMG shocked expressions because it opens up your eyes. And we're gonna come and do the same, the same adjustment layer. We're gonna adjust the teeth as well. We're just gonna brighten them and also we're gonna desaturate all of these after so if the if your maybe your subject doesn't have the whitest of teeth then it doesn't really matter because we're going to fix that anyway and then we just want to do it you don't want it to look like a zombie so you don't want it to have it blown out like that where his eyes are really really bright compared to the rest of his face you just want to do it very subtle and bear in mind we've already lightened up his eyes area with other adjustment layers so maybe something around i'd say no more than 30 maybe 20 to 30 then what we're going to do is do another adjustment layer hue and saturation left all click and drag the layer mask onto the hue and saturation layer clipping mask it as well if you want not that it really matters and you're going to drag the saturation down. So yeah, as you can see, when you zoom out now, if you if you refer this back to the first image, you can see the massive difference that makes on a thumbnail image, especially when you're very, very far away, how much of a difference that makes and how much it highlights his face and the facial features. Now you can go back in and tweak some effects if you don't like the overall look, maybe his facial features are too bright and you've done it too bright on the lighten layer, or maybe his eyes are too bright or something like that. You can always go in and just fine tune this so don't use the same values that i've used tone it to your subject for your thumbnail because it will give a better result but the final thing we've got to do is we're going to duplicate our final layer where we've, we consider the light in order to look correct so once we've made a duplicate of our final adjusted layer what we're going to do is go filter we're going to go to other and we're going to go to high pass i haven't really perfected the setting for this but i think the best way to do it is kind of adjust the slider until you can kind of see it i can't really explain it it kind of blurs around the edges of contrasty bits of your image so you want to get it so that the contrast and details are nice and dark but it hasn't like blurred over it like if i slide this up too much and kind of see like there's a light kind of halo effect like here like going around the edge of his cheek you don't quite want that you just want these dark kind of bits to be as dark as possible so i'm going to go something like 23 for mine again adjust that to your liking on your high pass filter and then we want to click ok we're going to come to normal the blending mode up here drop this down and set it to overlay and we're going to add a layer mask fill the layer mask with black and then with a white soft brush come to places where we want the kind of sharpen effect to really apply now as you can see it will adjust the lighting ever so slightly as well it'll make it very contrasty because it gives that nice kind of sharpen effect but then what you want to do as well is drop down the opacity 
so that it's not completely contrasting his whole face. I'm going to leave it on about 60%. If you toggle that on and off, you can see the before and after and the massive difference it makes to the headshots of your thumbnails. It just makes your thumbnails that much more appealing. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. As always, if you did learn anything new, please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content like this every single week. If you have any questions about today's video or you get stuck on any parts and want some help, feel free to join my Discord. The link is down in the description below. I'm going to be making a channel on that for that specific reason. As well as if you just want to join anyway to join a community of likewise creatives, designers, video editors, illustrators, all the rest of it are all going to be housed in my Discord. So the link for that will be at the top of the description. But yeah, guys, I hope you found this video useful and I will see you in the next one.